Or it's 8.35 Friday morning. Joining down the studio, I got Scott McDaniel here from the Susquehanna Wildlife Society. Good morning, Scott. Good morning. And thanks for coming on the show today. How's it going? Going great. So far, so good. Nice chilly morning. Yeah, not too bad. Mm -hmm. And yeah, winter. I... <laughs> <laughs> Should be a little better. Than yeah, <laughs> hopefully it's a little bit better. And Andy Adams here. Good morning, Andy. Hey, how are you? Thanks so much for coming on the show. How's it going? Absolutely, it's going well. Cool, cool, cool. So you're with the Susquehanna Wildlife Society, also. Yes, sir. Nice, nice, nice. You guys got a big gala coming up. Take it on sale, Scott. Right? They are. So the event is on April 28th. Um, we're getting really close to selling out the tickets. So uh, those of you who are procrastinating out there, let's. Uh, Grab a ticket and have a really fun night with us. We're really excited for this event. It's our annual, our third annual event, um, and we have live animals there, That's drinks, food, silent auctions. It's a really good time, uh, music, and we're really um, trying to focus on raising money for the Susquehanna Wildlife Center. We're in the middle of construction, and we really need uh, the support of the community to help us uh, complete building. Uh, all of our exhibits and all the things we need to open it to the public. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure because that you guys are a nonprofit organization, so you know you don't have a deep pocket, Scott. Right, where you can afford <laughs> to pay all that on your own, and so you need that with the public. So it's going to be a fun night. So the tickets are on sale now. Um, what time does the event start on the twenty eighth? It's uh, seven p.m. Okay, great. So it's a nice late night event. Um, we go into about eleven. Awesome. And it's a really good time. We have a, a guy who brings some live owls. We have turtles, snakes. All sorts of things people oh, can see, get that. their photos with. Uh, so we always like to bring wildlife into the event as well, uh, so people will get to experience them and actually learn while they're having a good time. Um, so it's really important to us to do these types of things to get the community involved in what we're doing and, and to get that support that we really need to keep going uh, with all the things that we're doing. We do local wildlife research, we yeah. do rescues, we do conservation, we do educational programs. Uh, we're a small group, but we're doing a lot of big things, and we really need the help of everyone here. In, uh, Harford County and the surrounding areas. Yeah, I mean, you guys do a lot of stuff. I follow you guys on the uh, Instagram, on Facebook page and stuff, and you're always out and about in Harford County, Cecil County, and seeing the different uh, frogs and birds and stuff. And are you guys looking for volunteers to help you guys out? Yeah, we have a really strong group of volunteers, and, and we, we do have people coming in uh, to continue to help us for different projects. So uh, folks that have backgrounds with working with wildlife, that educational background, fundraising, grant writing, that kind of stuff. So... Anything that they think could contribute to our nonprofit, uh, we certainly love to talk to people about those opportunities. And we have a lot of renovation kind of stuff. So contractors, we right. have uh, carpenters, plumbers, things like that, that have donated time to us to help us actually do physical construction oh, cool. at our wildlife center. So uh, we really need all kinds of folks uh, with all kinds of skills to, to you know, give what they can to us. And they can just go to the website for more information, SusquehannaWildlifeSociety.org, right? Correct. Correct. So, yeah, and you usually have the link uh, on the page, but yeah, it's uh, suskywildlife.org, S-U-S-K-Y, wildlife.org, and we have uh, our email on there and all sorts of videos, and, and we have uh, contact information on the website, as well as a bunch of cool wildlife stories and things like that that we do. Cool, and we'll have a uh, direct language, so a little self-help also in a moment on our Facebook page, facebook.com backslash smash, it's WHGM, you can find more information about that. And so, Andy, how long have you been with the Susquehanna Wildlife Society? So, I've been with these guys about four years now. Okay. Uh, I've only moved to Hartford County within the last five years, um, but uh, we had a huge research project when the society started out called the Maryland Amphibian Reptile Atlas, and I was a part of that, so I kind of naturally gravitated toward the society, and I got more and more involved and uh, joined the board of directors, and yeah, I'm I'm in the fold now. Awesome. <laughs> You're in the thick of it. It's yeah. very cool. And so, I know you guys here also, um, you brought a little friend in here we're going to talk about here in a second, right? Uh, this You have a snake you brought in. Yes, we have a, a milk snake and a, a special variety of milk snake. Yeah. Right and so there's a cool story behind this snake, right? Right. All right, so we're going to get to that here in a second. So can you guys hang out in a second so I can play a song and then we'll, of we'll hear the story? Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. I'm excited to hear about it. So we'll post the information on our Facebook page. Stay tuned. We'll find out uh, the story of the snake uh, here in a second. So keep it here. In a couple minutes, we'll find out more information from our friends from the Susquehanna Wildlife Society on Smash Hits WHGM. 80s to now, Smash Hits WHGM, 844 on this Friday morning. For weather forecast on the way, we'll check in with Detour Day Sandler one last time and see how the roads are doing. I'm Justin Mallow, still joining the studio. I've got Scott McDaniel and Andy Adams from the Susquehanna Wildlife Society. Good morning, Scott. Good morning. Thank you for coming and staying here. And Andy, thanks for staying here as well. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. We'll stop by talking about the big uh, night of wildlife fundraising you have coming up on April 28th, right? Yes. So 
Yeah, one of the big things uh, we're trying to reach out to the community about is uh, sponsorship opportunities. So we have a bunch of different packages from $250 to $10,000 if you really like wildlife and want to help it. And what we need is local businesses and folks that want to not only get their name out there and promote their business, showing that they support uh, these types of um, nonprofits like ours, uh, but it invests in the work we do um, and helps us to get to where we need to be with the uh, construction of the Wildlife Center. So we do have sponsorship opportunities still available, and um, you have the links on your Facebook that cool. uh, they can contact us, and we can uh, you know, have a really great time while uh, doing great things for wildlife. Yeah, I finally posted the picture. If you go to Facebook.com backslash smash it's WHDM, you can see the picture with the guys, and you can see the picture with uh, the milk snake ambassador for the society, is what we're calling it. And so that's why, Andy, so there's a story behind this snake. Uh, I'm dying to know what's going on and what's happening with this. All right, so we Kingsman. have here yeah, um, milk snake, and it's a milk snake's a pretty common snake we have around here. They're super pretty, one of our brighter species here. But we don't actually have two varieties of them, right? We have our basic general eastern milk snake which you can find just about anywhere in the state um, but we also have a what's called a coastal plain milk snake um, and that's a different variety it's a little bit brighter it's just kind of a different color morph of them and because they're so pretty they have like this alternating uh, red and black and white coloration they're very attractive snakes and they tend to be targets for poachers uh -huh. right, who like to keep them in, act in uh, captivity. So uh -huh. um, anywhere on the coastal plain on the uh, eastern United States, you could potentially find these snakes um, from about Maryland all the way down south of Florida. And people go, I mean, they're head over heels for the snake. They'll do whatever it takes to sometimes to, to get these snakes and sell them uh -huh. uh, for top dollar. Uh, and the snake we have here was actually involved uh, in, a, in a bust uh, from... Uh, one of these incidents is there were people oh, uh, no a mass kidding. collection of snakes. Uh, Someone wanted to try to sell that snake to be killed off or sent off or something? Uh, uh, well, for a pet. I oh, mean, for a pet. Yeah, the people paid top dollar for these snakes here. Really? Yeah, and, and, the, and the interesting thing is some of these snakes look different depending where you get them. So if you get it in one county or the next, they may look different. Yeah. In one state or the next, if you get it from New Jersey, it might look different than it would look in Virginia. So, oh, okay. so people, it's, it's kind of a designer market in the pet trade where people want, oh, I want the one that looks this certain wow. way. A lot of people don't know that that occurs. So no. we talk a lot about you know, protecting sites where we do research and we do um, wildlife conservation. People are like, oh, why do you care? Like, who's going out trying to catch snakes and sell them or catch turtles and sell them? It's like, it's an actually, it's a real it's, thing that yeah. happens. So we have to be really cautious. So wildlife has all these other threats like roads and development and pollution and all those things. And then on top of it, and on top of it, catching them, trying to sell them. So, this particular snake was part of a multi-state uh, bust with Fish and Wildlife Service uh, in partnership with Maryland Natural Resources Police. Oh no, and kidding! And they got the guy taking him from a, a state park on the eastern shore, and he lived in Connecticut, and he was uh, they were poaching snakes out of the Outer Banks, of North Carolina. Wow! Uh, Outer Banks king snakes, and they had this big, uh, you know, profit-making um, business that is using wild snakes to fuel. Uh, so they actually set up a sting, and they, they caught him catching and selling them. So Oh, they uh, caught him? Yeah, they caught him. He had a $5,000 fine and 300 um, community service hours he had to fill. Uh, so Good. it's serious, you know. So if, if you really want a pet snake, get a captive bred individual um, from a reputable breeder. You know, we shouldn't be taking animals out of the wild for sale. Uh, yeah. And for, for one, it's illegal in Maryland to, to catch these snakes out of a state park and sell them. Um, so it's pretty interesting. So it was donated to us as an educational group because nice. uh, it had been out of the wild for too long and had been mixed with other animals, potential disease transmission back into the wild. Oh, so, okay. So uh, it was given to us. Unfortunately, it has to remain out of the wild, but we'll use it to tell the story and, and also to promote. So that's why he's kind of the ambassador now for the uh, society. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I yeah, like that. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and it's just poaching impacts a lot of our native uh, reptile and amphibian species, not just snakes, but turtles too. And uh, especially with turtles, you know, they reproduce so uh, little, I mean, once a year, if that, um, that it really depletes populations quick when you remove, you know, even single individuals from them. So it's just another threat to wildlife, you know, we need to be aware of, and, and it does happen pretty regularly. Yeah, I mean, uh, people use it for turtle soup and disgusting stuff. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I hate it. So uh, stick with vegetable soup. Everyone will be fine, you know. It's disgusting yeah. turtle soup, obnoxious. So don't be obnoxious. Leave the animals alone. That's right. I care more about the animals than... 
the people, obviously, as you guys do, too. So that's why we get along so well. So uh, very cool. So you're helping to raise money for the animals and for your Senate, which kind of takes care of animals and uh, the environment in our area. So the big thing is the fundraiser. The 28 tickets are on sale now. And uh, they just go to the website or the actual events page for more information to check it out, Scott, right? That's right. Awesome. Easy, easy. Cool, cool, cool. Well, thank you so much for coming down on the show today. I appreciate it, Scott. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thanks for everybody's support. Uh, our community is really fantastic in this area. They're really generous. Um, and, you know, we have the support uh, continuing that we need to really do great things for wildlife. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate it. And thanks, Andy, for coming on the show, too. And thanks for helping me preserve wildlife. Yeah, absolutely. It was fun stopping by. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, cool. You can take a look at the picture of uh, the milk snake on our Facebook page for the direct link to get you to their website for more information. Facebook.com backslash smash hits WHGM.